Alabama and Michigan. Um, Tom, when you think about the Washington Texas matchup, you hinted earlier that you know sure not looks like an over matchup to you. What a, what about Texas's defense and you know the what Michael Penix might be able to do? Uh, you know Quinn Ewers coming off a tremendous performance. What are some of the initial thoughts on that matchup between Washington and Texas? Again, Texas favored by about four and a half uh, right now on the open. Well, we touched on it a little bit last night when we were kind of just pontificating about potential playoff matchups. Like Texas's secondary is a bit suspect. The front is fantastic. It might be the best in the country, but the secondary has some holes that you can get to. And then we've talked about how Washington, when its three receivers are healthy, there are very few secondaries in the nation capable of covering and stopping all three of them. So you've got that matchup of Washington's receivers versus a Texas secondary that's kind of iffy. But you've also got the matchup where Washington has been better, I think, over the second half of the season, or at least more complete as an offense because they've been able to run the ball. I don't know if they'll be able to run the ball nearly as well against this Texas defense. So it could come down to Michael Penix and those three guys having to hit some big plays and shots. On the flip side, you're giving Sark a month to prepare for a team. Mm. And we have seen Sark do very, very good things in a week. You give him a month, you give him the talent that he has, and you give him a Washington defense that, while not as bad as I think most of the talk about, or like if, if you're, if you haven't paid super close attention to Washington this year, you probably just assume its defense is bad because it plays in the Pac-12 and there's a lot of high-scoring games. It's better than you think. It's not elite. It's not the kind of defense that I think is going to have a realistic shot of shutting down this Texas offense. So I look at this matchup, and I am seeing a game that is going to be 42-38, to 38, something like that. It's going to be a really, really fun – I mean, if you look at these two semis – this is the one I would bet on being the most entertaining by far. You, I mean, you have to – like, this total has to be in the 60s. Yeah. Yes. I would, I would think. 62 and a half. It's on, it's on turf? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, this is going to be – Indoors, no weather. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll, it'll be in the 60s. I, and you mentioned Steve Sarkeesian. How about give Kalen DeBoer yeah. Yeah. a yeah. month to prepare? Like, these, yeah. these two coaches, it's, it's going to be awesome. You, and – Washington a month to get healthy. Like that's mm -hmm. the thing that all the, I mentioned this several times, like coming into the championship weekend, like if you can just get through this weekend, we've been looking at Washington being like, man, there's something they look banged up. They look hurt. They're receiving core panics, all of it. They get a month to get healthy. You might get the version of that offense you saw in the first month of the season. This is, this is a game. If you're a defender on Texas or Washington, you're not going to want this to be under draft tape. Oh, yeah. You're going to get cooked for the most part. Well, and it's so funny. You were talking there about the Washington defense, and I was just remembering um, the opening stages of the Pac-12 championship game when Bo Nix is running for his life. And that's an offensive line that we talked about as one of the best in the entire country. And Washington was able to get pressure, get penetration, and, and really make Bo Nix uncomfortable in a way that they were behind the sticks and then third and long scenarios. I mean – Oregon could not put together any kind of drive early on in that game. It was, a, it was an impressive showing, you know, from a Washington defense that had been, you know, under – like we went from Jimmy Lake, which was offense optional coaching, mm -hmm. right? You still had some of those, you know, highly talented players. You didn't have the the monsters on the defensive line. You had good edge rushers. You had, had enough players that you knew that – they, they could flip a switch. And it looked like, at least in that Pac-12 title game early on, you know, they, they had a good plan to be able to win those battles, and, and that'll be a big challenge going up against another good offensive line uh, in the Texas Longhorns. Anything else on Washington, Texas? I mean, I, a cool color matchup. Texas, <laughs> Texas is potentially going to New Orleans and then Houston. Yeah, friendly, I mean, you're friendly sites for yeah, uh, the you're, Texas Longhorn fan base. I mean, that's the like with Michigan going, Michigan has to travel way out to the West Coast, but at least they have to drag Alabama across the country with them. Washington's got to fly across the country to New Orleans, where it's going to be playing a Texas team that is very close to home. So it's it's a bad spot. You know, I I think like the happiest team is Texas. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. You have. Yeah, of all, of, four, 
Correct. Like I, uh, I don't think I don't think Bama's over Georgia about playing Michigan. No. Like I mean, they'll probably go off as a small favorite, but like Michigan's going to bang you for sure, and like that won't be easy. Um, we also have one of our shortest turnaround semifinal the title game that you can possibly have with January first and the eighth. Sometimes it has yeah. been as many as like 10, 13, wasn't it 12, 13? 13 days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We also don't know uh, the status of Xavier Worthy. So mm -hmm. in the post game, Steve Sarkeesian said that the x-rays were negative and he's fine. Um, I'm going to take him at his word for that, right? If I was a coach, I would say that regardless of whether he was fine or not, just to make sure my team gets in. You know, kind of like I, I thought Florida State should have done the Aaron Rodgers, he's coming back in three weeks type thing. With, or just with, lied. With Jordan Travis. Just lied right. about it. Just yeah, kept exactly. him under wraps. Today he's rehabbing. Yeah. They would have been better off. Exactly. Um, so in, in some ways, from a power rating standpoint, clearly this is the best matchup for Texas. Style-wise, it is arguably the worst. Ooh. In terms of, of Washington's ability to throw the football around. And like trade Washington, paint, exploit your weakness. Yeah, like Washington's pass game is way better than Alabama's and way better than Michigan's. So, like, if you're Texas, you got to get through this. If you get through this, I think you actually match up extremely well against the other two because your bigs are just as good as Bama's bigs, I think, and just as good as Michigan's bigs. Do you want to see an Alabama-Texas rematch? We could finally find out who's better. <laughs> Oh, they play because again. We've we've already determined. Oh, that. I mean, <laughs> some results, some games, some results matter. Some don't. It depends. What it depends so, on. That's that's you know, gray area. Should I say this? Say it. Yeah. If say you it. have to, as long as it's not you know. Yeah, yeah you, don't. So y'all y'all are going to join softball. Y'all are going to join softball teams next year, right? Then we're not going to do that Tuesday night show and pretend these <laughs> rankings matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I ain't into that. I mean, I already didn't do it, but like it, it's fakery every week. Yeah. I want to say, I speaking was... of that, speaking of that kind of energy, I've seen a lot of people in the comments saying they're done with college football after this. <laughs> yeah, I don't right. believe you. They'll be back. I think you'll be right back. I do every... think Florida State fans might, might not go to the Orange Bowl. I don't know. If we can sell would... this as a national title game, I think they will. Man, yeah, there I is an SEC opponent. If you go 3-0 and against the SEC and you have a common opponent, two common opponent, opponents, and you beat Georgia by more than Bama did and Bama wins it, I think you have a legitimate claim to the national championship. Yeah, I, I, my you heart guys, I always... The camera of Mike Norvell and the team live. Yeah. Like, I, um, I catch a lot of heat every year because I cry about the preseason rankings. This is exactly why they matter. You know, like the perception yeah. of your conference is shaped from the get-go by everyone. Like the SEC had the worst record against non-conference opponents than any of the Power Fives. And yet at the end of the season, we're talking about ranked wins and how impressive the conference is, even though there's no metric that says that. Bud had an outstanding video that you should go check out that gave their best wins. And it's a joke because they don't have any. And yeah, they still get the benefit. They do. I, I mean, well, look, it, get out of your poverty conference, boys. <laughs> Join a real yeah, one. It, it, I, I, I think it's telling how, um, like Fox's broadcast of the Big Ten title game, is praising what an excellent defensive battle it is. Yeah, like Fox is promoting its product. Yep. Tessa Tor and Je Jesse Palmer are up there acting Downing. like it's beneath them to call the ACC title game. Like, when was it, like, if you guys don't want to do it, you can probably find somebody who wants to do it. There's a, good, a lot of good broadcasters out there. When was the last time Herb Street didn't call the ACC championship? Yeah, but he's so busy now. Like, come on. That, that's not I mean, it hasn't thing. stopped him before from getting on his jet and making it there. He's With always the busy. This weekend. Always busy. Yeah. But didn't he do Friday He night did stuff? Friday. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot. Um... Any any other any other words on Washington and Texas? We can't help ourselves. We just keep cycling back, and we're gonna start spinning in circles pretty soon. Um, any anybody else got any thoughts on the the Washington Texas matchup? It was a great Alamo Bowl a few years ago. I'd be thrilled if it's anything like that game. Wasn't that last year? 
no, uh, there was one, or you know what? I'm confused. I'm I'm thinking of Washington Baylor, the Alamo Bowl game with RG3 in them a few years ago. Sorry, my bad. There was a Texas Washington Alamo Bowl, but it was a different one. Nick Saban's so happy. He's smiling. I'm happy Nick yeah. finally got something good in his life. Yeah, he finally got the break he needed. It's about time that Nick Saban yeah. and Alabama have caught a break. You know, nothing ever goes their way. <laughs> Man, he's. Mm. All right. Anything else? No. Yes. No. No. Sad noble. This is making me sad. <laughs> uh, it's just, again, it goes back to the players. I'm so pissed for the players. Yeah, I, exactly. Like, I feel bad for those guys. Think about Jordan Travis. Puts his body on the line. Everything out there. Lost. All for not. All for nothing. Mm-hmm. 